These are called azobenzenes, and what I want to do is show you how when they undergo electronic transitions from a ground state to an excited state, that we can influence that using a little bit of how the resonance structures look into achieving a situation where we can come up with different colored dyes. So we're going to start with the simplest azobenzene over here. We just have two aromatic rings, two benzene type rings uh, with a group right here. And this is the ground state structure, uh, assuming we're going with valence bond theory here. So, so what we're going to look at is what happens when we get to an excited state. So what does this turn into? And when we form the excited state, what's going to happen is these electrons are going to come here, and then a pair of electrons is going to come here, and then a pair of electrons is going to come here. And so when we're done, we'll still have our aromatic ring right here. We'll have a negative charge on this nitrogen. And we'll have developed a positive charge on the benzene ring. Now, that positive charge there is unstable. The negative charge here is a little bit unstable as well. However, there is some resonant stabilization to this. These electrons can shift here, which will shift the carbocation to here, or these electrons can shift here, which will shift the carbocation to here. So, so we're really splitting up this positive charge over those three different things. But what we have here, and if we go back to molecular orbital theory here, we have kind of our lowest occupied, or our highest occupied molecular orbital is, in the, is a pi orbital. And so we're doing a transition from this pi state to a pi anti-bonding state. And so the gap for the electrons to move into that excited state is just beyond the visible light into the UV by a little bit. So what we're now going to look at is how can we stabilize these two features here, this negative charge and this positive charge, by adding substituents onto the benzene rings so that we can cause this gap to shrink a little bit so that we're looking at a visible light absorption. Right? So the first structure here, we're adding an amine group to one of the benzene rings. And when we do the same transition as we had before, so we're going to bring these electrons here, these electrons here, and then these electrons here. And we're creating this structure like we had before. So now we have our negative charge still here. If we look at what results, we have this positive charge here with a nitrogen or an amine group bonded to that with positive charge. And so we can stabilize this structure because we have a pair of electrons here that we can shift, form a double bond here, which will shift that positive charge from the carbocation to the nitrogen. Now the nitrogen would have a positive charge on it, but that's a situation where we have eight electrons and the nitrogen is significantly more stable than this. And so now when we're looking at our pi to pi star transition, what we're going to find is that that transition is going to be much smaller than it was before. And so now, here we're absorbing UV light, here we're absorbing visible light. When we undergo that transition from homo to lumo, we're looking at a case where now we're absorbing visible light, and so therefore this is going to potentially be a different color, or a significantly different color than this one was. Now there's another way we can affect this, and that is by putting a nitro group on one of the benzenes. So if we look at this resonance structure with what changes there, so nitro group, we have an oxygen and an oxygen like this. So there's a positive charge in the nitrogen, a negative charge in the oxygen. We have this negative charge on this nitrogen. So the nitro group can actually help stabilize this nitrogen here. So what can happen here is we can now shift electrons from this nitrogen to here, which gets rid of the negative formal charge there. And then we're going to have to kick out some electrons here, form a double bond here, and break that double bond there. Okay, now when we're done, I'm going to redraw this in a different color so we can see it. When we're done, what we have there is we have oxygen single bonded to the nitrogens, with negative charge on each one, positive formal charge on this nitrogen here,
So we have this as kind of the beginning of our structure here. So what we've done is we've shifted away the negative formal charge from this nitrogen uh, onto the oxygens over here, which is preferential and a little more stable. And so again, we're going to see that that gap between these two is going to shrink a little bit. Now, this one will be a larger shrink than this one will be. But what we could also do is we could end up combining where we put a nitro group on one side and a mean group on the other. And now we get the stabilization from both effects and we can end up with an even smaller gap. And so now maybe we're absorbing red or orange light as opposed to green or blue or something a little bit higher in energy. So what we end up with is, we start with this pi to pi star transition. And then by adding a nitro group, we end up stabilizing this state by a little bit. And when we add in the mean group, we end up stabilizing this state by a little bit. And so each time we're changing what color is being absorbed from the UV, maybe to violet, maybe to blue or green. And then we can do both. And if we end up doing both, then we might end up stabilizing it to the point where now we're absorbing red or orange. And so we can look at the resonance structures of the first excited state and then figure out ways to add electron density or remove electron density where we need to. So over here, the nitro group is removing electron density from this side over here, whereas over here, the amine group is adding electron density. So we can fiddle with this structure in order to end up with a particular dye that we want. And we can do small changes, like maybe instead of a hydrogen here, we put a methyl group or something to that effect. And there might be a very, very small tweak in this. But these are, these are two particularly useful ways that you can you can fiddle with the azobenzene dye, cause it to change what color light it will absorb.